Um, my research specialization is on the ancient Maya, and particularly the ancient Maya of Belize uh, in Central America, although I do also work on some other projects in other Central American countries. Um, my research at the moment focuses on the development of communities and on resource, resource use by the ancient Maya in the eastern lowlands in a region uh, that we call East Central Belize, which is today the Stan Creek district of the country of Belize. Uh, I've been working there for the last three years um, with a, an international crew, usually uh, made up of students uh, and staff from Canadian universities, but also American universities and various Belizean institutions as well. Um, we've been going since, since 2014, uh, doing uh, a lot of reconnaissance work and testing work, uh, and are just now finally getting into actual archaeological uh, investigations. But uh, on the side of that, what I'm also very much interested in is the development of industrial areas uh, in Latin America. And in this case, I'm focusing heavily on industries uh, in Belize today. So things like the logging industry, shrimping industry, citrus, banana, stuff like that, and how it impacts communities uh, in Belize. So this obviously translates in some ways to my interests with regard to the ancient Maya. And this is a, a topic that's of huge interest to really all Latin American scholars in some way, one way or another, as most Latin American uh, countries are considered to be resource development uh, countries, as is Canada in many ways. In terms of engaging students in my research, I adopt a, a number of methods. Uh, first off, I, my primary uh, employment is with Athabasca University, which is the main uh, distance education university for Canada, and so all of our courses are online. And so that's a particular challenge when I'm having to engage students that I can't sit with face to face. And so we do this through a number of uh, interactive methods uh, through our courses, but we also make a point of really trying to bring, really try to bring our students into our own personal research and whether that's sending them a data set from uh, my research in Belize that they can work with and look into in terms of Say I send them material that focuses on the sourcing of obsidian. They would do background research on how the ancient Maya used obsidian, how archaeologists go about researching um, obsidian use, and then they've got a data set to use and to say something about. So in that, that's sort of the main way we do things uh, with our students uh, there. Um, a lot of those students also come into the field with me, as do students at the University of Calgary, and that's been uh, one of the most beneficial uh, collaborative elements that I have with the U of C is that I have students actually in the town uh, where I am based who are interested in many of the same issues that I am so I bring them into the field uh, whether it's their first time or they've been there in the field many times uh, and we collaborate collaborate together on various projects but also I try to bring a certain number of students in uh, on my research that I do back home um, once we've come out of the field we have uh, different types of artifacts that we bring back and are having to analyze here. I always try to uh, bring uh, undergraduate students in particular uh, into, my, into my work. So right now uh, we're working on a, a research project on sourcing obsidian with a student from an undergraduate from Athabasca. We're working on uh, studies of granite use by the ancient Maya with a graduate student in the Department of Anthropology and Archaeology at Calgary. Um, and any number of other uh, small collaboration. And now I spend not only a lot of my time doing my research for archaeology, teaching archaeology courses, but learning a lot about how to engage students through um, tech um, technology and technology-enabled learning. Mm -hmm. And that's been really interesting uh, for archaeology because a lot of what I try to do with my work is is promote it and engage people, not only archaeologists, but um, people that uh, who might be community members in the area where we work uh, in Belize, um, but also just the general public. And this has been really, a really, it's a really great experience at Athabasca because we really do have to think about um, when we are not able to sit down with a student face to face when they're t when they have all the busyness of their lives. How do we 
gives them a, a degree of flexibility to learn about a, a discipline that's extremely hands-on and they're learning about it in a distance way um, in an online way and so one of the big things we're doing right now is we're and, and I'm doing this in collaboration with some people here at the UFC um, is we're developing a virtual archaeology laboratory um, which will be an open education resource that has a series of basic lessons that any archaeology student would learn in their first year of an archaeology program um, where you normally have a lab course. We're, fi we're trying to figure out ways to do that in the virtual setting and that's been hugely um, exciting and rewarding in terms of my work with Athabasca.